I'm Tap G. And I'm Surfer Clock. And welcome to What's the Attraction? Where our work, work is, is your vacation. vacation. Hey, Surfer Clock, I've got a question for you. Shoot. How much is nostalgia worth? How much is nostalgia worth? Yeah. I don't really... Uh, what do you mean? You know, to they who run the theme parks, I mean, or, or even the fans, what's it worth to them? Are we talking like an actual dollar figure? Well, yes. And no. You're not making this any easier. Okay. On April Fool's Day earlier this year, a phony announcement came out on Facebook that Disney was finally building a fifth park. I said phony! It's not happening! This announcement claimed that this fifth park would be the home to an abundance of retired Disney attractions. Horizons, the extra terror estrial alien encounter, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Body Wars, all the defunct extinct Disney attractions of Yesterland. Did someone just swoon? Yeah, that didn't take long now, did it? Well, of course, like I said, this turned out to be false. But in the comments section, people were nearly in tears, hoping it was true, or bawling out about how mean it was to tease them like that. Disney fans are practically feral creatures when it comes to their Disney nostalgia. It's kind of the same thing with Universal, actually. Confrontation, Jaws, Back to the Future, Hanna-Barbera, Earthquake... These aren't as many as Disney, but Universal and theme park fans are just as wild about their defunct attractions as Disney fans are. First, I want to ask, why do you think humans get nostalgic in the first place? Well, it harkens back to a time when we were younger. Usually when we watch a TV show from our childhood or we find an old toy from the attic, it reminds us of when we didn't have to worry about things like a job, your mortgage, taxes, bills, your car, or your cell phone. It reminds us of a time when we could be lost in our own worlds of fantasy, completely and totally, sometimes for hours on end. Is that why people get so defensive when Disney announces a ride is being replaced? Well, sure. I mean, who wants to see their favorite childhood rides being taken away? But what about when people protest even when Disney announces something even bigger and better? What? You never saw Toy Story? Sometimes, no matter how flashy or colorful the Space Ranger, it'll never beat the cool, traditional cowboy. And, of course, the ever-conservative explanation, people don't like change. Well, by and large, people don't. But why? I... I don't know. Well, I have a theory. You do? Oh, hey, don't get wise, buddy. I think it's based on an evolutionary desire. Humans, whether we'll admit it or not, are extremely vulnerable creatures. When we're placed in a situation or presented with a product we know little about, we are instinctively fearful. Humans, since the dawn of evolution, have always been particularly vulnerable to everything from bacteria, viruses, wild animals, to the elements, and even certain plants can kill us. As a result, if we can't assert our dominance over a new thing, we would rather just avoid it altogether. Man has never, you know, really enjoyed true fear like this, and will rarely cop to it and instead would rather either dodge the issue entirely or we'd rather just beat or shoot it dead to master control over it. That's all pretty fascinating, Tap G. But where does it come into play for, say, theme park attractions? David Kennig, author of Mouse Under Glass and Mouse Tales, wrote about when plans in the 90s were made to replace the great moments with Mr. Lincoln at Disneyland. The show was sparsely attended. Um, as in, you know, maybe a few hundred people went to see the show daily, and that's pitiful numbers for Disney. When it was announced that the Muppets 3D was set to move in, Disney got some harsh feedback. Like Joss Whedon's Firefly, it doesn't matter how passionate fans are, if the numbers are small, it'll have to go. But, in this case, Disney relented, and to this day, Lincoln still plays to small crowds relatively unchanged since 1965. And other attractions, like Peter Pan's Flight, the Country Bear Jamboree, the Universe of Energy, the Maelstrom, Voyage of the Little Mermaid, Terminator 2 3D, and Tom Sawyer Island have all operated almost untouched since their premiere dates, and all have stood the test of time. Barely at best, but poorly at worst. And when they do change, like the Country Bears, um, how are the fans holding up, by the way? Oh, let me check. And enter. Oh yeah, they're still mad. Then there's the special cases like Captain EO and the Enchanted Tiki Room. What about them? Well, unlike the ones we just mentioned, these shows came back as permanent additions. After they'd been quote-unquote permanently replaced by new, more modern, technologically updated attractions. What's the verdict on that? Eh, hit and miss. 
Captain EO almost never fills up, and the Tiki Room, I think, only fills up because it's caught between Jungle Cruise, the Magic Carpets of Aladdin, and Pirates of the Caribbean. Both attractions do have a certain charm to them, but it's pretty clear that those haven't endured too well with today's interactive, tech-savvy, fast-paced audiences. In fact, how'd they originally do when they came back? Originally? Great! One was a tribute to a recently deceased musician, and the other was a means to undo a mistake committed 13 years prior. But as time went on, the inevitable happened. The shine came off the apples. People lost interest. And worse yet, many kids, according to their parents and grandparents, just didn't get it. So the older attractions are hit with the older crowd. At least, the ones who liked them to begin with. That's good, right? After all, visiting the parks is all about making and reliving memories. How often has Disney done year-long campaigns about making memories? I mean, nostalgia's gotta be worth a ton to them. I thought so too. But then I thought about our generation. Now that we're young adults, we've been bitten by the nostalgia bug pretty hard. So far, Disney's done remarkably little. Aside from a few pins and vinylmations, how much Disney afternoon merchandise have you seen? Pretty much nothing. Ironically, Universal seems to get it much better, where you can take a selfie with Doc Brown, Scooby-Doo, or Woody Woodpecker, even if their relevance is faded. Maybe, but there's no chance Nickelodeon Studios will ever return. Oh great, Surfer Clock! Now just tell the kids out there there's no Tooth Fairy while you're at it. What I mean is, give it time. Doc Brown has been around for a while and hits a large demographic, while Scooby and Woody are time-tested cartoons. Nickelodeon's just new enough that when it becomes retro, it'll be another 10 years at best, if at all. So, in the end, what exactly is nostalgia's net worth? Hmm. If I had to guess, I'd say about 50-50 with the new stuff. There are times when the new has to let the old take its course, and the old should bow out in favor of the new. If we did live in a park full of extinct rides to satisfy our inner child, and often not so hidden conservative side, we'd be deluding ourselves in an illusion. An illusion of a time and an era that did exist, or maybe didn't ever, and needs us to put away our proverbial toys and move on. And if we did nothing but the new stuff, we could easily lose sight of our roots. Without Small World and Haunted Mansion, we'd be merely playing into a world so fast-paced and often wasteful that we lose sight of who we once were. It'd be like drawing a straight line without a ruler and erasing the line as you go. You could be following the direction you should, but how would you have any way of knowing? Bottom line, indulge. Recollect. Binge watch a bunch of defunct attraction point of view videos on YouTube. Just remember that many of those attractions had to shut down for a reason, and check out the new rides that just opened. After all, even Mr. Toe's Wild Ride was brand new at one point. So folks, what's your take? Do you value the nostalgia over the new? Or is it out with the old and in with the new? Leave a comment below, or up top, or wherever YouTube decides to put the comments section next. Wow, is that really necessary? I'm sure our fans will thank us if YouTube decides to rearrange things down the road. Right. So, now that that's all said and done, Surfer Clock? Yeah, Tap G? Would you sign my release all Disney Afternoon shows on DVD and Blu-ray petition? Under one condition. Yeah? If you sign my Please Restore Nickelodeon Studios Orlando petition. Party on, Wayne! Party on, Garth! I'm Surfer Clock. And I'm an overgrown man-child. And we're What's the Attraction? Well, our, our work, work is, is your vacation. vacation. Ooh, and I got one for the fantastic world of Hanna-Barbera. Here's one I got for renaming Hollywood Studios back to MGM. Oh, awesome! <laughs> I got another one right over here.